This is section 5.3, the fundamental theorem of calculus, and our first objective is to understand and apply part 1 of that FTC, or the fundamental theorem of calculus. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to write the only condition that is required in order for a function to have a continuous differentiable antiderivative. Let's say that y equals f of t is a function that is continuous at every point in the closed interval from a to b. I have drawn a function here that has a problem with the derivative here, but we can see that it is continuous and we can draw it without picking up our pencil. Now what I'd like to do is to define an accumulation function capital F of x that will be the accumulation of little f starting at a and continuing on to x. And we're going to write that function as capital F of x equals the accumulation from a up to x of the function f of t with respect to t. If I change this x here, it's going to change the x in the function. So that means I've become a function of that upper limit of integration. As x changes, the accumulation will change. Now let's say that we want to take the derivative of this function using the definition of the derivative. If we look here, we can see that f prime of x will be the derivative of this definite integral. It will be the limit as h approaches 0 of capital F of x plus h minus capital F of x all over h. That's our old definition from chapter 2. Now I'm going to plug x plus h into the big function, which means I will accumulate from a up to x plus h on the little f, and then I'm going to subtract x plugged into that function, which means that upper limit will be an x. And now what I want to do is I want to think about how I can simplify that top. Well, accumulating from a to x plus h would look like this picture, going from a all the way to x plus h. So this entire accumulation would be represented by this definite integral. And now I want to subtract the accumulation from a to x. So I'm going to start with a and go to x this time. So that would be the purple region. Now if I subtract the purple region from the entire region that I had at the beginning, then we can see that what's left over is this little tiny strip. So I've written that analytically here, and it says f prime of x, which was that limit, which was this limit, can be replaced with the limit as h approaches 0 of the accumulation just from x to x plus h of that little f of t dt all over h. So now in order to continue with this, we need to think about two things. We need to think about the extreme value theorem, and we need to think about our rules for definite integrals. Since little f is continuous on the closed interval, it's going to be continuous from x to x plus h. And by the extreme value theorem, we are guaranteed both a max and a min somewhere in that closed interval. Furthermore, by the domination rule for definite integrals, we know that if I take the smallest y value and create a rectangle, then that accumulation here, which is the smallest, or the min f times the width of this, which is h, will be less than the true accumulation, which in turn will be less than that maximum y value times the width, which is h. So the minimum f times h and the maximum f times h will trap this integral that we have up here. If we now take this inequality that we've developed and divide all three by h and then apply a limit, we will end up getting this on the left, this in the middle, and this on the right. Well, this one on the left can simplify and the h's will disappear. This one on the right h's will disappear, will simplify to this. And this one in the middle, if you track back up, remember that was the derivative of this accumulation function, which was capital F's derivative. So we have essentially trapped that derivative between the minimum y value on f and the maximum y value on f. Now lastly, we want to think about what both the max and minimum values of f, little f, will collapse onto as h approaches 0 and as x plus h approaches x. If you look back at the picture here, if h goes to 0 and it shrinks down here, then the max and min y values that are trapped in between are going to eventually squeeze down onto f of x. So that means here that this limit will become little f of x, and this limit will also become little f of x. So our 
big F's derivative will be trapped between the two f of x's. What that means for us is that big F's derivative will equal little f. That is our fundamental theorem of calculus part 1. It tells us if little f is continuous at every point on the interval from a to b closed, then an antiderivative of little f, namely capital F, which was that accumulation from a to x on f, is going to exist. And furthermore, that capital F is going to have a derivative at every point in the closed interval, and that derivative is going to equal little f. That's pretty powerful as long as you understand what it's telling us. So let's think about what that part one is telling us. The first thing it says for us is that the definite integral of any continuous function is a differentiable function of its upper limit. It also tells us that every continuous function is the derivative of some other function. And lastly, this is the big one, it tells us that differentiation and integration are inverses of each other. So I took little f and I integrated it to get big F, and when I took the derivative of big F, I got back to little f, so they undo each other. So we'll see how these help us with integration problems after we practice some skills involving part one.